on screen. I got a bad feeling about this. I'm gonna make him an offer, Captain. I will find you, and I will kill you. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I am the one who knocks. That's what she said. Not great, Bob. Shall we begin? Hello and welcome to another crime-fighting episode of On Screen. I am Vengeance. I am the Knight. I am your host, Dylan Wright, and I'm here to take you on a journey through film and television. So 2017 marks the 25th anniversary of one of my favorite shows of all time. This was a show that I grew up watching, and I was just blown away by it back then. And watching it today, I think it still holds up. It is, in my opinion the best adaptation of Batman. And no, I'm not talking about The Dark Knight or whatever the heck Ben Affleck thinks he's doing. I'm talking about Batman the Animated Series. Premiered on September 5th, 1992. And I honestly think it's one of the better animated shows of all time. I think that it really puts forth a product that isn't just for kids. It has the quality that adults could enjoy as well. When you're talking about Batman the Animated Series a lot of things pop into people's heads. The first thing that pops up a lot of the times is the Joker, who is voiced in this series by Mark Hamill. Yep, that's right. Luke Skywalker voices the Joker in this series. And let me tell you, best portrayal of the Joker, honestly, hands down. Mark Hamill brings such a sinister quality to the Joker and makes him both funny and terrifying at the same time such an impressive performance, especially in the Batman the Animated Series movie, Mask of the Phantasm. <laughs> but before we get too far into the show, let's get some backstory. So it was a show that was created by Bruce Tim and Eric Radomski. They were working on Animaniacs and other Warner Brothers shows and saw the success of Tim Burton's 1989 Batman and 1992's Batman Returns. And they wanted to make a darker Batman. They wanted to bring back the Dark Knight instead of the 60s campy version brought on television by Adam West. So they got together and they pitched the idea to Warner Brothers, and they loved it. They really enjoyed the idea, and they let them do what they would. The show has almost a noir-type feel. And it's it's dark. It's a very dark show. There's a lot of guns on the show. There's some violence, some pretty deep and philosophical storylines. It goes farther than a lot of other kids shows dare to go. There's a story with Mr. Freeze. And Mr. Freeze up until this point is you know, a jokey, typical comic book villain, has a German accent, does a lot of cold puns. But when... Paul Dini, one of the animators and writers on Batman the Animated Series, got a hold of him. He created this tragic backstory to how Mr. Freeze got the way he is. He portrayed the scientist, Dr. Victor Freeze, as a tragic figure who is trying to find a cure to his wife, who has this terminal disease and is frozen. His funding is cut by the company he's working for, and he ends up being pushed into this vat of chemicals that causes him to be stuck at a lower body temperature than everybody else and he has to he he becomes cold on the inside in more ways than one he still loves his wife but he just hates the human race what they've done to him for trying to help his wife get cured and it's a really powerful episode you wouldn't expect something like this from a kid's show back in the day you think okay yeah it's it's for kids it's going to be you know fun and jokey and you can't really take it too seriously but this episode, Heart of Ice, it actually won an Emmy Award, and it just shows how quality the show became and how it brought children's programming to a place in the zeitgeist that it can be seen as, wow, okay, this is this is something more than just for kids. This can be consumed by a lot of a lot of different people. It all comes down to the writing and it comes down to the portrayal of the characters. Kevin Conroy as Batman. Amazing. He does an amazing job. It's really interesting that he came up with the dual Bruce Wayne Batman voices where they sound different and they act differently and how Bruce Wayne is more of the facade of Batman and Batman is the real person, the real character, using Bruce Wayne as a front. The way Kevin Conroy portrays Batman, there's a vulnerability, but there's also a dark and brooding performance in there. It makes it really powerful. 
there's some humor in there too. He manages to have a snarky Batman at times who's you know making fun of different things. It's a good show. It brings some of the characters that were seen as B-list Batman characters to the forefront. Like the Mad Hatter, Jervis Tetch, based off, of course, the character in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. They make him this weirdo that mind controls somebody just to get them to love him. And it's they delve into the problems with that and how psychologically messed up he is for that. And it's really interesting to see these kind of neuroses being portrayed on the screen in a kid's show, nonetheless. This isn't made specifically for adults. It's made for a younger audience. And the show managed to introduce to me a couple of different things that would later on develop into, I guess, my interests. The show is just so good. There's an episode where the villains are playing a card game together. And they're talking about the different ways they almost got Batman. They almost nabbed him, almost killed him. They all have, you know, harebrained schemes one after another and giant birds come out of nowhere and stuff like that. And then one of the villains, Killer Croc, is like, There I was, holed up in this quarry. When Batman came nosing around, he was getting closer, closer. And? I threw a rock at him. And they all look at him like, that's that's what you did to almost get Batman through a rock at him. And he goes, It was a big rock. So the show's not afraid to have fun, but it's also a really deep and powerful story at times. Going back to Batman Mask of the Phantasm, the movie that was created for the show, that's a really powerful... I keep saying powerful, but that's really the word to describe it. It shows the origin of Batman and how he meets and falls in love with this woman and how he feels guilty for giving up his crime-fighting crusade because of this woman. He pleads to his parents, Please, I need it to be different now. I know I made a promise, but I didn't see this coming. I didn't count on being happy. Please, tell me that it's okay. And it's a really emotional scene at the graves of his parents as rain and lightning and thunder are are going in the distance. It shows, it goes into the the psyche of Batman in a way that a lot of the other adaptations of this character haven't been able to. They show how messed up in a way he is and how consumed he is by this crusade. And it's a really interesting thing to see. And the best part is, this was supposed to be a kid's show. This wasn't for adults. This was for a younger audience. And if adults liked it too, hey, that's awesome. That's great. It definitely stood the test of time, and I happily celebrate its 25th anniversary because it gives the best Batman I've seen. It's so close to the comics. It does things that are above and beyond the comics in certain ways. It created the character of Harley Quinn, who we all know is has exploded onto the scene. It's just a show that I think is quality. It's a quality kid show, and in a way it pioneered all these quality children's television programs that are out today like Steven Universe, Adventure Time, all these different shows that have a really deep and powerful message because it shows that kids aren't ignorant to these types of things. Kids are able to process these types of situations, and they're able to see, wow, this is something powerful. It helps with growth. And I'm also kind of still terrified about Mark Hamill's portrayal of the Joker. It's, it's That laugh is just, oh, holy God, really terrifying. So that's going to be it for this week's episode of On Screen. If you have any future topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know. I would love to cover anything that you'd like me to cover. And as always, until next time, take care. It was a big rock.